the earliest ones were those very first ones in 70, 74, 75. I can still remember where we um, had our first meeting and it was at the Berry Football Club and they asked for expressions of interest. And this is going back to the time of Adrian Carell, which a lot of people would have known, um, Joe Keatley, lots, lots of old Berry names. We had six clubs started off in a very raw state. And then after a little while, that fell away because all the other towns got um, indoor stadiums. So therefore, it just fell apart and the weeds grew through the, the basketball court and everything. So that was a shame. But then I was moved away from the area and came back in 1990 and uh, that's where it all started. I think the friendships made, you know, because we still catch, you know, whenever we see anyone, it always reverts back to our days of... We had a very small group of committee people that did a lot of hard work including John and Sue. John and Sue did heaps of work. At that stage I would uh, I wasn't playing basketball I don't think and we were t sending our children down to Barmera to play and um, it just wasn't the same. That's when he decided we would get the Berry Basketball Club rolling again. So the most memorable thing to me was the like the formation again of the club, at, um, obviously, because that's just where it started for me. I don't remember the previous time. Um, and I really can't remember times of winning trophies or whatever. I, I just really remember the actual competition as a whole and the fact that it was up and running. And my perspective is just from the setting up of the competition once once we just decided we needed our own club. You just wanted your own special group. <laughs> and John was really passionate. And I, the, the thing that I remember is when all the women um, took all our sizes because they were making the basketball uniforms. So that was back when Jenny Todd and... Um, I always remember Jenny um, making the uniforms and there was probably several other ladies as well. I think there were a few people that were happy to try and get basketball up and running in Berry again, um, just for the development of our kids. We were in awe of all the other places, you know, all the um, Renmark. Well, that's when, as I said, that's when the early one went defunct because everyone wanted to go and play indoors and it was Renmark or it was Barmer or it was Loxton. I remember playing in a Sunday comp at Loxton as a young girl before I left the area, you know, and that was indoors. Um, the old Ashford court playing basketball on wasn't real flash. <laughs> no. Not so much now, but you know, in the basketball world when, when we first started, we were 20 years behind. 20 years behind because everybody, including myself, I went to Barmer, I went and played at Remark yeah. because, you know, there was just nothing here. There was, you know, we had, we had, I think there was more weeds growing on the basketball courts than what there were basketballs bouncing yeah. up and down, you know, and that's just the way that it went. To have the sport grow, you would have needed to have a bigger or better facilities. Whilst we made the best of the Glossop High School court, um, it wasn't really ideal to have, you know, to draw people to the club. And I guess from there then, I understood that there was this long time work um, from you know, being done by other families lobbying to get a stadium that we're sitting in right now. Um, and, and so pleased that I just happened to be, when I say I, that a committee happened to be involved on the year that they uh, ticked off on building it. So um, to think back to 02 and to where we are now is, is amazing, yeah. I think going forward, um, again, it's about the numbers, it's about making sure that the environment um, keeps young people and young families um, wanting to come to the club. Um, we talked earlier about the fact that there is expansion possibilities in the stadium where they could add courts and wouldn't that be great if you could 
get to a point where you've got such participation that you know you're forced to push that wall down and get a couple of more courts in here. I think that would be seen as a success. We've got this awesome stadium here that the committee's worked so hard to get and Berry Basketball Club and Netball Club actually run the stadium themselves. I'm Peter Safalidis, I've played a few years for Berry. Um, I rocked up here in 2005 and a teacher from Glossop High School just got me out to play basketball. Hadn't really played before, just a bit of social. Played a few years there in the Div 1s and then had probably five or six years off and um, back playing in the Div 3s and loving it at the nice new stadium here. The, the best thing for me is uh, was winning the, the Division One Women's Grand Final. The first, the first team to do it, starting from absolutely nothing. We didn't have an under-16 girls side, we didn't have an under-18 girls side, and we didn't have a uh, Division Two women's side and a Division One women's side. So we were, were like in dire straits when it came to the women's side of it. And we were at a Grand Final over Loxton, and me and a couple of other committee members, and we said we've got to put a plan in place to to, um, you know, for the future. And our under 12 girls had just won the grand final that weekend. So we just said, that's it, our under 12, that's, it, that's our next Division One side. So we had to wait five years. Yeah, I think sometimes when you, when you really want something, um, you know, you have a bit of luck and it works out. I think it's just a great community club. I think people probably look at like Div 1 success and that's one measure of a club. And we have had some good teams there over the years, but the sense of community with Barry is just awesome. And really enjoy it. Right, my daughters are both playing here now. Um, last year on Grand Final Day, I got to play on the same day as my daughter and both win, which is cool. Um, yeah, so I think it's just a good family club. Just gives a sense of belonging to everyone and something for people to work towards together. And, to have a good time, be healthy, all that sort of stuff. Um, the club's been running the um, academy in the winter time now, which is great for our kids to be able to hone their basketball skills all, all year round as well, as well as the disability program that Chrissy's running. So in 2022, normal registrations would come through and um, you know it's really difficult when you get players come that, you know, young people that are 16, 17 that want to play basketball they've never played before. And it's even more challenging if they've got a disability. And I said to the committee, oh, I'm thinking about running a disability, all in, we called it a disability program, but have now changed it to all inclusive. What do you reckon? Um, I reckon I could run that on a Wednesday night after I do baby blazers and mini blazers. I, I'm gonna put it out there and just see how we go. I said, look, if we got eight, we could run a four on four comp. Yeah, no worries, Chrissy, off you go. Well, it started off the first night, I think we had 14, and then it just grew. It was so exciting. These players, they just loved it. It's sort of just gone from strength to strength. The basketball club's doing things for people and um, the, they do things back and it just, it's just a great feeling. Berry, I guess, as a family club and as a place to be, the level of participation and you know just the work that the committee do and, and you know trying to include all members of the community to the club, um, I think it's a really good place to be. And my name's Todd Glenn, and I've been playing at Berry since I was 10 years old. So I just turned 40 last year, so coming up 41. So yeah, I think I've had half a season off in that whole time. Mateship's a big one. Like you just build up so many mates from playing, whether it's you know any type of um, team sport. But yeah, just a good good group of mates and just enjoy being around the club and you know I'm heavily involved with my kids as well generally so yeah just keep pulling the guns you want to keep having a go as long as your body will let you just keep playing because you love it at the end of the day. Yeah, I would describe our club as being really inclusive really welcoming just a great place for kids to be around in terms of learning skills and, and making friends and playing and I think we play a really uh, important role in our community in terms of providing facilities and sport, sporting clubs for kids to play at. Berries come along in leaps and bounds and I'm sure it'll keep getting stronger. It's a beautiful place to be. Feeling a family at the club, um, and I say that because there's a consistency of people that have contributed to the club over the years. So, so you know, you tend to know most people that, that, are, that, that have been around the club for years and years. So you would call it a real family environment. 
You just hope that everyone that goes to a club feels welcome. So that's what I hope for Berry, that they they are welcoming and and have lots of success.